Paul and Barnabas are on the move. That's what's happening this week. Welcome to this live stream. I'm Steve Thomason. It's Drawing the Bible. It's time to dive in and do some more painting in a cartoonist guide to the Bible. Thanks for joining me today. Every Thursday afternoon, I go live and just invite you into my studio so we can hang out together. Um, I should be on YouTube and Facebook right now. And if you're joining me live, then I invite you to uh, drop a chat, say hello. And if you have any questions about the Book of Acts, about what I'm doing in Photoshop and how I'm painting these pages, uh, don't hesitate to ask and I will uh, check the chat and respond. So uh, today, like I said, we're talking about um, Paul and Barnabas. So let me catch you up. It, my, my big goal each week is to try to complete five pages of this 43 page uh, cartoonist guide to Acts. And this is a big week because I'm halfway there. I set a nine week goal um, to paint all 43 pages. I've already drawn them. I've been working on this all year. But uh, this nine week sprint to get all the pages uh, painted and completed, I'm halfway there. It's pretty exciting. Let me just catch up to speed on what we did since last week. Um, last week, if we go to Explore Bible, this is the interactive Bible bookshelf. And if you come down here and click on Acts, it will take you to the Acts landing page. And you can see if you've been paying attention, uh, last week I went ahead and updated the interactive outline. And you can see that the pages that I have painted, I've dropped into the box. So that's kind of cool. So I painted through page 20. So last week, if you were with me on the live session, um, I was painting Peter and Cornelius. And so let's just go there and catch up with what happened. So last Last week, we saw that um, Cornelius, a Ro Roman centurion, had a vision from God uh, to send for Peter. Peter had a vision from God to eat that which was unclean and to not call unclean what God has called clean. And Cornelius' household is um, receives the Holy Spirit, and he's a Roman, a non-Jewish person. So that's pretty, pretty amazing. So I painted that last week. I painted this panel during the live session. So since then... Uh, I have finished a lot more pages, and we have a great number of Hellenists became believers in Antioch. So now we shift the focus from Jerusalem to Antioch. Um, and the folks in Jerusalem send Barnabas up to Antioch to check it out. And they see that the Holy Spirit is is coming there just like he's come to everybody else. So Barnabas feels called to go to back, go to Tarsus where they sent Saul. And so he goes and he gets Saul, who's making tents in Tarsus, brings it back to Antioch. They start preaching and it's there that they're first called Christians, which is pretty cool. And then uh, the next scene is that we see um, a group of prophets come from Jerusalem up to Antioch and they predict a severe famine. And so the disciples in Antioch, they decide that they need to take up a collection and send uh, support back to their siblings in Jerusalem. So that's pretty cool. And then page 19, a horrific scene where this section of chapter 12 in the book of Acts focuses, is, focuses on Herod, the puppet king of Israel, puppet of Rome, ruling um, Israel. He's... He's actually Agrippa the first, and he does horrible things. He has James murdered. He has Peter arrested. They pray for Peter. Peter's in prison, and this uh, messenger of God comes and breaks Peter out of jail. And he goes to the house of Mary, mother of John Mark, and Rhoda meets him. And she's like, yo, Peter's at the gate. And they're like, you're just dreaming. It must be his ghost. But no, really, boom. And there he is. And then uh, we go back, flashback to Herod. And Herod, because Peter breaks out, Herod has his guards killed, you know, like any good king would do. And then uh, we see Herod goes to Caesarea. And while he's in Caesarea, he's speaking uh, to the people of Tyre and Sidon. And they they proclaim that he has the voice of a god. And because he like accepts that, says, yep, you're right. I have the voice of a god. 
he dies. Boom. And so this is a big commentary, Luke's commentary on Herod and the whole dynasty of Herod and how much it's worth. And so then we have in chapter 13, we switch our focus again to Antioch, which is now the center of the church. We have the prophets and teachers of Antioch. We have this uh, multicultural, uh, com- uh, incredibly diverse dream team of Saul, Lucius, Simeon, Barnabas, and Menaean. And God calls uh, Saul and Barnabas uh, for a special mission. And they head out on what we know as Paul's first missionary journey. And so they go to Cyprus, Saul, Barnabas, and John Mark. And they have this showdown with uh, Bar-Jesus, also known as Elimus. And here is the first time we see Saul called Paul, which is his Greek name, which is helping us understand that we're shifting now to a ministry to the Gentiles. And... Um, so Elimus has the same kind of blinding experience that Saul experienced. But now we're going to call him Paul from now on. And this is a page that now we're into this week's work. Uh, so yesterday I painted this page where um, Paul and Barnabas, they set up up into this region of Pamphylia and Pisidia. But John Mark bails on him. And we don't know exactly why. That's going to come back in the story later. And then they're in a synagogue, which is their normal practice. They go to a synagogue in Pisidia, in Antioch in Pisidia, and they're invited to speak. And so Paul stands up, and this is the big quintessential uh, speech, synagogue speech of Paul, where he, uh, he reasons from the Hebrew stories that Jesus is, in fact, the Messiah that they've been waiting for. He was crucified by the Romans, buried But he rose from the dead, and that is the big, that's the deal. Jesus rose from the dead, and they are witnesses of this. And David, he so he goes back to King David, who said in the Psalms that through this man, forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and that trusting in Jesus is going to set you free in a way that the law of Moses never could. And that's Paul's basic argument to the Jews And at first, they're super interested. They're like, come back. And so many devout Jews and converts to Judaism, so Gentile converts to Judaism, follow Paul and Barnabas. But the next day, enter the Jewish religious leaders in Antioch, Pisidia, who become Paul's nemesis. And they convince the crowd that Paul and Barnabas are teaching heresy, that the Bible, that the scripture never says this. And so they reject Paul and Barnabas. And so this is the official moment where they switch their ministry to the Gentiles. And thus the word of the Lord spread throughout the region. Boom, which brings us to our page for today. And this is what we're going to be working on painting. So let, with no further adieu, let me uh, switch to my works work station and get my music going so we're just gonna we're gonna sit back and we're gonna paint so i've been working on this page uh, for a while and this is a fun page there's a lot going on in this page let me zoom out all the way um you can see that in chapter in the last part of chapter 13 and into chapter uh, 14 through chapter 14 we have Paul and Barnabas cruising around and so we've got um, they start up here uh, where we left off in Antioch Pisidia but the religious uh, Jewish religious leaders they convince the the Gentile leaders of the city to throw Barnab- Paul and Barnabas out so Paul and Barnabas leave And they come to this city called Iconium. And see, what I've done is I've created the whole map um, because they're traveling. But things happen in each section. So I've isolated with these funky panels. Um, This is the story that happens in Iconium. And then this six-panel mini-story is what happens in the city of Lystra. And then they come down here. Uh, they go to Derby, and then they go back through the whole region, and then they come back to Antioch in Syria. So this is the whole uh, big deal. And so I am up here, and we're going to just keep painting. And so what I've got is lots and lots of layers. And if I go to P and B color one. 
you can see that's my color layer and I alpha lock that and so I just pull up my airbrush set it to multiply and then I can just choose the color and just do some quick shading these characters are pretty small So I don't need to go too crazy with the shading. Then I'm just going to set the same brush to overlay and choose a light color. And I can just do some highlights. Just a little bit just to give it some depth, some interest. All right, so another thing that I want to do is on top of right underneath this layer, I want to take a layer set to um, multiply and just I just want to drop a shadow underneath these two characters just to give it some depth so you can see these guys are walking over the panels so I'm going to do something with the transition between these panels, these gutters, at some point. Okay, so now I'm over here in Iconium. This is group two. You can see the whole group disappears when I do that. So I've got my color. Just alpha lock that. And Paul and Barnabas are on a separate layer, so I can just uh, do some quick shading. If I set this to, um, actually I'm going to just want to put some variation of color in here for like different um, I'll set it as a gray for like their their robes at first and then throw in a little bit of my standard robe color for a couple of them yeah not spend too much time on that now if I come up here and hit multiply I can just do some really quick shading just to give it some interest. And just for fun, I'm going to do like a, gear number one, a little anachronism, how's that for a good word? I'm going to set this to overlay, choose a light color, just do a little bit of rim lighting on the top of these characters
So that's that crowd. So the crowd is divided in this situation. So let's put some different colors back here. I'm going to drop down here to the big background and drop in some shadows underneath this crowd. And I've got these religious leaders over here too back up here to color and let's see we've got oh these are my got a special color scheme for the Paul's nemesis they've got kind of a light gray and they've got the stripey caps and that that way we're going to recognize them when they show back up in Jerusalem at the end. Let's hit multiply here. and hit overlay. Do a little rim lighting. This is super rough because it's really, really small on the page. Zoom out, you can see. Okay, so that that's good. I need to put the shading under a big background. It's back to multiply.
we need to make that uh, overlay. Because when we do it overlay, then we can see the shadow underneath it. Back here to arrow, arrow, do eraser. Okay, let's color Paul and Barnabas. Zoom in on these guys. That's alpha locked. So put in their basic colors. So if you're watching live, feel free to drop a drop a note in the chat, say hello, ask a question, just painting Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey, cruising through the region of uh, going from Right now they're just leaving Iconium in this picture. This is page 22 out of 43, Cartoonist Guide to the Bible. Pretty fun. Little brown shoes. These characters are really small on the page, so not a huge amount of detail. So I hit multiply on my brush mode so that I can drop in some basic shading. Just want to keep it from being really flat. But just super basic. Then we take the same brush and switch it to overlay mode. Make it a little smaller. Come up here, get a, a light color. And then we can just pop in some really quick rim lighting just to, to set it out. Set it. Really need it to pop out from that crowd in the background for sure. So now if we zoom out, there we go. We got Paul and Barnabas cruising out from Iconium because the crowd is divided. And this crowd, this half the crowd loves them. This half of the crowd is being influenced by the unbelieving Jews to stone him. You see, they're picking up stones. And so now they cruise over. So now we've got a, an issue here with this arrow because I want this arrow to be above everything else. And so we need to make um, that arrow's looking good. But for some reason, this arrow, let's find this arrow on our stack of layers. This arrow, if I, if I go shift command up bracket, that color goes up and above. We need Paul. Oh, sometimes I lose my brush. We need these two to be up and above there. So they're on top. What's happening is if I have it as normal, it does overlap. So I think instead of overlay, I'm just going to do a little opacity. So that way you can see it kind of over, you know, or, or I 
hard light actually works. So if I bring the opacity up and do hard light, oh yeah, hard light works. Because I just wanted to, I want you to see the lines, but I want you to feel like that arrow is going over everything. So they're going from here to Lystra. And I'm probably going to add a shadow under that when it's all done. So they're cruising. So now we're going to come over here to, I'm going to hit save. Now we're going to come over here to this healing scene. We're in group three color. So if I alpha lock that, let's let's put in some local color here. It's got a little bit of a dingy gray tunic. Barnabas with his signature color. And then let's just do some. Now I need to put a little shadow. I've been putting the 
shadow on the big background layer. Hope that's not going to bite me in the butt later. Back up to color, switch again to overlay mode. So Paul commands him to stand up and we come over here to 3D, just get rid of that and come to color. So this guy stands up, he's healed, yay! And that's pretty awesome. And the people think it's pretty awesome. People are like, yo, that's cool. Paul's pretty happy too. It's like, yeah, we did. Everybody's super pumped that this happened. So I just want to show. I just need to show. Uh, let's see. Come up here to overlay. Put some of these highlights in. He's like, yo, I can walk again. And that's pretty cool. Like, 
Whoa. Okay, so let's put the shadows in on the big background. Choose our multiply. Okay, now I'm going to come up here to color and then I'm going to create a new layer and put a an intense glow of this blue behind his legs like that. And then if I choose color pixels, the pixels of color, and then delete that section from there. And then if I hit filter, blur, Gaussian blur, then I can just, I can make that overlap a little bit. And then what happens if I make it add or I make it overlay, no, I make it add. Well, I want to keep that blue. So I just, well. Vivid light's pretty cool. So let's do the vivid light. But let's bring it up above. Let's, what happens if I bring it above the ink line? Yeah, the linear light kind of affects that ink line a little bit. That's cool. Let's do it that way, shall we? Yeah, sweet. So how's this page coming together? Group 3C, but I don't want this to show right now. I don't want this to show right now. So this is going to be an actual scene. So. Trying to think. No, you know what? I think I do need to make these a scene. So if I choose this, let's choose a color for the ground like that. sky color go back here
There, that'll make it like a little bit more offset as a scene. So we need to do the same thing over here. Turn that on. Let's try to get that same vibe going over here. If we come set this to multiply, Okay, that looks better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's better. Sweet. Save that. Okay, so now this makes sense why we need to paint this background. All right, so... people in the background. Just laying in shadows underneath the characters right now. Got kind of a big scene going on back here.
So I'm imagining they're like outside the city walls and they're lighting fires, they're bringing sacrifices. So what happens in this scene is that <clears throat> because the man was healed, these, remember these are Greeks and these are Greeks who follow the ancient Greek religions uh, of Zeus and Hermes. And so they think that Barnabas is Zeus. And since uh, Paul was the one doing the talking, he's Hermes, the messenger of the gods. And so they, they, they're like, let's worship him. That's all we know how to do. It's the only way we know how to respond to deity is uh, slaughter animals. And so they're like out here to make sacrifices to him, which is pretty crazy. All right, so let's see. First, I'm gonna do local color for our our friends here. Whoops, I need to alpha lock that layer. Barnabas's signature color, which is also the inner cloak for Paul. And then Paul's got his signature brown outer tunic. And again, because Lana has come in and done the careful work of doing these block colors. It allows me to be able to just sloppy paint. Okay, so I'm using this Zorn palette-ish for my colors. And so to make green, I'm actually using a dark yellow. So if I if I went over here into this green area, it would look weird with uh, my color palette. So just I'll just throw in a couple variations of of that, and I can pop in a couple highlights of that just to lighten it up. Maybe we can throw in some berry berries. Maybe I don't know blossoms just to give it some interest and then highlight this banner so that you can really read it so we got Zeus and Hermes and I'm imagining these are like the priests of, of uh, Lystra and so I'm just gonna give them these kind of white tunics or these little white skull caps. Not based on any historical accuracy. So just for the record, I am not claiming to be historically accurate in this clothing for Lystra. Just guessing. I use the same color for the, the eyes of the bowl. Here. 
And then we got this fire going on in the background. So I'm gonna initially start with this orange color and then I'll do some special effects for that in a bit. Um, let's do some... in these robe colors in the crowd back here a little bit and then in the my crowd in the background I'm gonna throw pop in some of those colors as well I'll come back up here to color I forgot I'll go ahead. So I'm just doing local color here and then I'll shade it in just a second. All right, so that's my local color. Oh yeah, let's make this blade like that. And then um, I'm gonna make my oxen kind of a brown to set them off from everything else. Hey, if you're joining me here in the last few minutes of this uh, live stream, welcome. You got any questions? Oh, Tom Weaver, day job got in the way. Hey, no problem, Tom. Good to have you here, man. Always good to know you're out there. I know my 2 o'clock in the afternoon is not the ideal time for this, but that's when I'm working, so this is my day job. I figured I was going to be doing this anyway. And it would be kind of a fun experiment to see what happens if I live stream it. And if you're anything like me, I watch my favorite live streams after the fact. So notice what I did here was I, I took that color that I was using for the ox or for the bowl and I just grade it out a little bit and that that gives it a little bit of atmospheric perspective so that you want your more intense colors closer to the front okay so there's my local colors and now I'm just going to switch to airbrush but switch my airbrush mode to multiply and when I do that, I can just do some quick airbrushing to indicate a little bit of shading variation to give just a little, a little bit of depth. minutes left. Time flies when you're having fun, right? people are trying to worship Paul and Barnabas because of their healing this man and they only 
way that this particular group of people can make sense out of a healing like that is to to think that Zeus and Hermes have arrived in their midst and so they're like we got to make a sacrifice got to bow down to them honor them thank them for their healing powers for taking mercy on humans Paul and Barnabas are like no we are not gods any more than you are but we know the true and living God Jesus has done God has done this healing through the name of Jesus and that's what we're trying to teach so check it out spare those animals Time of animal sacrifice is done. Well, everybody, uh, this is what I got done. Um, so it has taken me an hour to do finish this guy, paint these little crowds, paint this scene, this scene, and start painting on this scene. Uh, thanks for joining me today. This is page 22, and I actually did finish page 23 already, but Lana's... Lana told me that she thought this page would be more interesting to watch being painted live. So um, I think she's right. Um, but I've done page 23 and I've, I'm going to finish this one today and hopefully finish page 24 today so that tomorrow I only have to do page 25. And 25 is my goal for this week and I'm going to keep working um, halfway through. So hey, thanks for watching uh, go to cartoonistbible.com slash acts and check out all the pages um, we're done we've, we are now done through page 21 and page 23 and um, so by the end of this week we'll have page 25 done next week is going to be page 26 through 30 and by the end of September all 43 pages should be done if everything goes according to plan and so I really appreciate you joining me live for those of you who did join me live today. And if you're watching this later on during the week or whenever, um, don't hesitate to drop a comment because I'll still get those comments um, and you can you can uh, reach out to me. Hey, just wanted to let you know a couple announcements if you're still watching. Um, I do a Monday, a, a weekly live call a, a visual text study over at cartoonist bible network i have a network that you can join um, it, it's kind of a it's a place for people who are visual learners and teachers who care about scripture and theology and want to be able to learn how to communicate uh, using visuals and to collaborate and learn more about visual communication and visual learning and um so on Mondays, we study the text from the Revised Common Lectionary and the Narrative Lectionary. Um, and it's really a fun time. And it, like I said, it's live and it's also recorded, but it's only available to members of the Cartoonist Bible Network. So you can check that out on cartoonistbible.com. Up in the right-hand corner says CB Network. And you can join. And for members, not only do you get access to that weekly Bible study, but you also get a discount code where you can download everything on the cartoonist bible uh store for absolutely free all downloads free and so uh that's a pretty good deal because the mega packs are like 25 dollars, and you can get all four of those for free that's a hundred dollar value right there so uh if you're interested i'd love to have you join me at the cartoonist bible network and again thanks for joining me live today and next week We'll be back. However, next week, I think I'm going to switch to Fridays. So stay tuned for further 